make, make sure we are live. Okay. Okay. Uh, Seth, you want to open us with a prayer, please? Hello. Dear God, Hello. I humbly come before you today in appreciation for all that you have done for us. Thank you, Lord, for your sacrifices so that we may be reconciled to God and set free from the bondage of sin. Thank you for enduring so much suffering on our behalf. I pray that we will have the same kind of strength to endure life for your sake. In your name, I pray. Amen. Uh, we today are going to start a lesson related to the will of God in our life. What does it show us? So I will start with you, Seth, since you're the one talking. What does the will of God in your life show us? Me, sir? No, the other Seth. Oh, what is this question again, <laughs> sir? The, the the will of God in our life, what does it show us? How to forgive others and give love to everyone. Very good. How to be loving. Okay. Jumi? Sir, the will of God for us is to be, uh, to give love and be loved. Okay. Nolan? The will of God, sir, is uh, for us to be saved. For us to be saved, that is absolutely true. Cora? What is the question again? The will of God shows us what can we learn by studying the will of God. What can we learn or yes. what, is the will of, what is the will of God? No, what can we learn? What does the will of God show us? I think um, primarily the will of God is to for us to spread uh, his name. So okay. I think studying the will of God makes us learn and realize what our purpose is, what okay. we need to do. It teaches us to be evangelistic. Very good. Mila? The will of God for us sir, is to love one another, to forgive and praise God. Okay, very good. Julie? By showing love each other, sir, and share the gospel of God according to the scripture. Okay, very good. Uh, by the way, everybody write this down real quick. Romans chapter 10. Verse 17. Do you know this one, Julie? Romans 10, 17. Okay. Because what we want to do is we want to try and learn. It's going to take us six or seven weeks, okay? But what I want to hear is when we get to the end and we're offering in the invitation... I want to hear the congregation know the words, know the plan of salvation. Meet Melin, do you know that one yet? The Great Commission? No, Romans chapter from hearing, 10, verse sir? 17. From hearing, from hearing the words of God. Very good. That's what it says. Do you know it by heart yet? Not really, sir, but okay. I know. We got to work on that, okay? All right. Uh, what the will of God is, is that he wants no one, absolutely no one to be lost. Julie, give me Matthew chapter 18, verse 14, please. 14. 18, 14. Matthew chapter 18, verse 14 says here, 
So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven, the one of these little ones should perish. Okay, so what does that actually mean to you? Actually, sir, it says here, I think Jesus said this because according to his, uh, he's not his own, own will, but according to his father. Okay, it is his will, but they want who to be saved? Everybody, right? Yeah. Is everybody going to be saved? I think that's this thing here that says no. The parable of the wandering sheep. Right. Now, actually, there's several parables, sweetheart, that, that tie in here together. Uh, the analogies in this parable. Uh, the man with 100 sheep goes looking for the one. The 99, those are the faithful ones. And the one that went astray is the backslider. Seeking for the lost is God's search for the unsaved. Rejoining the flock represents the pleasure over the return of one who has gone astray. Uh, the fold, the flock of sheep it's not specifically mentioned but it is employed implied that it is the church or it could be fellowship with god now the mountains that are all around those represent the danger that exists for anybody who slides away or moves away from the flock and finds themselves in the world Give me John chapter 6, verse 39. John chapter 6, verse 39, Seth. Six thirty-nine, sir? Yes, please. John chapter 6, verse 39 says here, And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. Okay. So this is a double affirmation. They doubly affirm here that the claim that the son of God declares that he has the highest authority in the universe. All has been given to him now that re what does that refer to that refers to all souls who respond to the offer of the free salvation and their response here is being viewed here as god giving them to jesus which is indeed true lose nothing they want to lose no one so Let's repeat this. Who does God want to see end up in hell? No one. Nope. Nobody, oh. right? Yeah. But who makes that decision? Who makes that choice? We. Ourselves. Right. Now, do we make that choice by sinning? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I'm going to say yes, but more importantly, we make the choice by refusing to repent. First John chapter three tells us, if you say you are without sin, you are a liar and the truth is not in you, right? That's what it says. So we are all sinners. We have all sin, right? That is a choice that separates us from God. But where does the real separation occur? The real separation occurs when we refuse to repent. By the way, let's put a human spin on this analysis, and I want you to think about it. Who here has a brother or a sister? Raise your hand. Okay. Have your brother or sister ever made you angry? You'd raise your hand. Okay. Did it break the relationship? No. 
That's how our relationship is with God. Now, if it if they do something and then refuse to repent, refuse simply to say, I'm sorry and start doing right. Okay, let's uh, play a little uh, mind game here. If your brother or your sister ask you for money, they say, can I borrow whatever the number is? Okay, can I borrow 10,000 pesos? And you say, well, I don't really have it because my rent is due next week. And they keep going. You may loan them your rent money. But look, you got to promise you're going to give it back to me because I've got to pay my rent. If I don't pay my rent, I've got no place to live. Make sure I'll do it, but you got to make sure you give me the money back. Well, they don't give you the money back. Are you going to be upset? Yes, right? A little bit or a whole bunch? Can't hear you, Nolan. Big, sir. Big. Big time, yeah. Right. But they have a relationship. So if they come back to you and say, look, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry, forgive me. Would you forgive them? Yeah. Yes. Right. So that can that but that's what happens is once a relationships get broke gets broken it requires that somebody repent. And if they refuse to repent that relationship stays broken. And then time goes by. Maybe they don't talk to you for 10 years. And they, because I'm not paying you your money too bad for you, I'm not gonna repent for what I did. Now, how hard is it to repair the relationship? Is it easier or harder? Harder. Harder. Harder, right? That's our relationship with God. If we commit a sin, we hurt the relationship, right? But if we repent right away for the thing that we've done wrong and we try not to do it anymore, the relationship is healed, right? But the longer we continue as it is, the more difficult it gets to repair that relationship. Right? Do you, am, I, am I making sense? Are you guys following me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, it also, scripture also tells us that he wants none to perish. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine, Juvie. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine says, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, notwithstanding that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So what does he want? Uh, for us to repent. For us to repent, right? For us to say. Sorry. 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 And then what? Not do it anymore, right? Yes. Not only does God want no one to be lost. Not only does God wish that no one would perish, God also wants us to live for the will of God. First Peter chapter four, verse two. Nolan. First Peter chapter four, verse two. Yes, please. 
so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. So how should we live? With the will of God. For the will of God, right? Um, now, this closely parallels some thoughts that are in Romans chapter 6 using different words. So who wrote the book of Romans? Do we remember? Paul. Paul, very good. And who wrote the book of First Peter? It's Paul also. Hi. Who wrote the book uh, Peter. of First Peter? Peter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, First Peter did, right? So if I tell you that Paul used different words than Peter used, but carried the same message, does that make sense? Mm. Yeah, because uh, Juvi and Nalin may be both trying to tell me the same story, but there's no guarantee that they're going to use the same words, is there? Yes, yes. for sure. No, there's not. Correct. No, there's not. Okay, and that's what you meant to say, vocabulary. Okay. Um, but God wants us to live for his will. Would it be fair if he did so and he did not give us the tools to do so? What do you think? It's not fair. It's not God fair. Us, yes. Go ahead, Nalan. I'm listening to you. God gave us the tools, sir. Di did Bible. he? Mm -hmm. uh, oh. How about giving me Hebrews chapter 13, verse 21? What's the reading, sir? Me? Uh, I think it's Mila, yes. Okay. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 21. Equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is placing in his sight through Jesus Christ to one be glory forever and ever. Amen. So not only does God want us to live for his will, but he gives us everything that we need in order for that to be how we live, right? It's all there. It's all, we have what we need. Do you have good days? Yes. Do you have bad days? Yes. Read for me 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Laura? 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. It says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Okay, so what does that really tell? Well, it's kind of plain, but what does it say? Giving thanks um, in everything bad or good, uh, everything. Okay, somebody well, give me another verse that parallels that. Romans 8, 28. Very good, Julie. Give her a... What does Romans 8, 28 say? I can't memorize her by heart, but... All things. Yeah, all things. Work according, together. According to God and his for, purpose. For the good. For the good. Of those who love God. According to his purpose. And have been called according to his purposes, right? Very good. So we know that those two work together, right? The scriptures very much say the same thing. We have to stay perfect, maybe the translatable word, but what it's actually looking for. 
is it's looking for mature. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. What? Who's Me, reading? Sir? Who's okay. reading? It's Seth's yeah. read, I think. Seth, you're reading Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. Colossians chapter 4, verse 12 says here, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. Okay, go ahead and give me 13 to go with it. And 13, for I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you and for those in load. Laodicea, and in Hierapolis. Hierapolis, yes. Okay. So, tell me what you know about Epaphras. hardworking, he's hard praying, he's concerned for the brethren that are, by the way, Col the book of Colossians was written to the church in Colossae. And he's also interested in the church that's in Laodicea, right? By the way, when we get to Revelations chapter three, it's apparent his concern for the church in Laodicea was well-founded, right? Okay. All right, let's 